Hi, I'm Don Dawson. When you drive defensively, you're always looking for trouble. Not that you want to cause any, but so you can defend yourself against other drivers and the trouble they can create. Whether they're speeding, tailgating, or just not paying attention to what they're doing, other drivers can put you at risk. But they're not the only problem. Most road accidents happen after sundown, when darkness makes it harder to see. Rain, snow and ice can send you out of control. And sometimes your vehicle itself can let you down. So how do you defend yourself from all this? You equip yourself with the knowledge you need to reduce or eliminate these risks. Let's begin with the basics. When you're driving defensively, you should always be thinking about a way out, an escape route, to get you free of any trouble you may encounter. To help you create this out, you need to set up a safety cushion, space between your vehicle and the vehicles on the road around you. First, establish a safe following distance between your car and the vehicle in front of you. Then, stay in the center of your lane to allow plenty of side space and pay attention to the traffic behind you too. Check your mirrors regularly. To determine the appropriate following distance, you can use what's called the three second rule. Watch the car in front of you. When it passes a landmark like a tree or telephone pole, count how many seconds go by before you reach the same point. If it takes you less than three seconds to get there, slow down and back off. You're too close. You can use this counting method to adjust your following distance when you run into challenging road conditions. For instance, when you're driving in heavy traffic, add one extra second to your three second following distance. For night driving, when visibility is limited or bad weather, add two seconds. Add a second or two for any other condition that you feel increases your driving risk. Oh, hi. Eating a sandwich or drinking coffee while you're driving or talking on your cell phone when you're behind the wheel certainly seems harmless enough, but it's not. Any activity that takes your eyes off the road, your hands off the wheel, or your mind off your driving is a distraction, and distraction means trouble. Distracted driving has been linked to as many as one in four car crashes. It kills and injures hundreds of thousands of people annually. Distraction comes in many forms, putting on makeup or combing your hair, adjusting your sound system, settling down the kids in the back seat, and of course, using your cell phone. You can control your own distractions, but what can you do about the other guy? If you find yourself sharing the road with a distracted driver, be careful. Assume they don't see you. Pull ahead or drop behind to give them a wide berth. Another bad habit you can avoid yourself but can't always escape in others is aggressive driving. Aggressive drivers push the speed limit, cut off other vehicles, fail to signal their turns, merge recklessly, and take a lot of other risks with their lives and yours. So you need to be prepared to defend yourself. The most common type of aggressive drivers out there are the tailgaters. They're always pushing. Because they want to go faster, tailgaters follow right behind your car, ignoring the possibility of rear-ending you if you stop quickly. When driving defensively, the best way to eliminate the threat from those tailgaters is to let them pass you. If possible, change lanes to get out of their way. 
Otherwise, slow down and keep to the right. If they can't or won't pass, turn your emergency flashers on, slow down, and pull over to the side of the road so they can go around you. Some aggressive drivers are especially dangerous because they're angry. They're the ones with road rage. Each year, there are thousands of reports of road rage. Drivers yelling at one another, making obscene gestures, even using their vehicles like weapons. What should you do if you find yourself on the receiving end of another driver's road rage? Rule number one is never make eye contact with an angry driver. They see it as a challenge and it only increases their rage. Remain calm, ignore gestures and shouts, do not return them. To get away from the angry driver as quickly and safely as possible, leave the road you're on if necessary. If they keep following you, take the threat seriously. Do not stop or leave your vehicle. Stay on well-traveled roads. Look for a police officer, drive to the nearest police station, or call 911. We've already mentioned that more than half of all accidents happen at night. Driving when it's dark is more dangerous, period. So driving defensively by slowing down and using extra caution is simply common sense. Don't wait until it gets hard to see before you switch on your headlights. Do it when the light begins to fade at dusk. And switch them on in gloomy and sloppy weather as well. When rain, snow, or other conditions require you to turn on your windshield wipers, make a habit of turning on your headlights too. And never drive using only your parking lights or fog lights. They simply just don't do the job. You need to adjust your speed at night as well. If you drive too fast, you'll overdrive your headlights so that the distance your vehicle needs to stop will be greater than the distance you can see. This means you're going too fast to react in time to what your headlights are showing you. High beams can extend your reaction time a bit because they light up the road further ahead and you should use them as much as possible. But remember, your high beams can blind drivers in the cars in front of you. So switch to low beams when the spray of your light reaches that of oncoming cars or the bumper of a car you're following. Sometimes your high beams can even blind you. Don't use them in fog or snow. A lot of that light will only be reflected right back at you. Bad weather makes special demands on your automobile and on your attention and ability as a driver. So don't wait for trouble. Driving defensively in these situations begins with preparation. First, make sure you've got a good snow brush ice scraper tool on board. Equip your car with the right tires for the season and the weather. This can mean all weather or even snow tires. But any tires must have plenty of tread on them to be safe. When your tires get worn out, replace them. Make sure your windshield wipers are in good shape too and can clear rain or snow off your windshield effectively. Check that you have plenty of non-freezing washer fluid to help your wipers do their job. And throw a couple of space blankets into your emergency kit. These will help you keep warm if you get stuck in the cold. Snow that piles up on a car or truck makes it harder to see because it blends in with the falling snow and the snowy landscape. And snow blowing off a vehicle can create instant whiteout conditions. If the car in front of you still has snow built up on its roof or trunk, increase your following distance so you're out of impact range if it should suddenly cut loose. The basis of the control that you have over your car is the friction between its tires and the road surface. Bad weather brings rain, snow, and ice, 
all of which can break that grip. So you need to know how to stay out of trouble. Apply your brakes sooner when coming to a stop. Slow down before you get to turns and curves. And always depress the brake pedal slowly and gradually. This will help you keep control of your car. But if the worst happens, you need to understand how to get that control back. Skidding occurs when one or more of your vehicle's wheels lose friction with the road. If you start to skid, don't slam on the brakes. This robs you of whatever friction and control you may have left. Instead, slow down by easing your foot off the gas pedal. Then regain control by steering with the direction of the skid. If your back end is skidding to the right, steer to the right. If it skids to the left, steer to the left. Another zero friction road problem is hydroplaning. This happens when there's too much water on the pavement. The grooves in your tires can't handle it and the rubber loses contact with the road. If you begin to hydroplane, do not use the brakes. Instead, ease your foot off the gas. As you slow down, your wheels will reconnect with the road and you'll regain control. Murphy's Law says that even people who drive defensively can sometimes get a flat tire. So you need to know how to react if one finds you. Not all flat tires go bang, but the ones that do are called blowouts, and they're dangerous. With a blowout, the tire goes flat quickly, suddenly creating a lot more friction with the road, and that will pull your car sharply to the side. To maintain control of your vehicle, you need to take action. Do not use the brakes. That will only make your car pull to the side more violently you actually need to accelerate instead. Keep a firm grip on your steering wheel and compensate for the pull of the flat by turning the wheel the other way. Once you've regained control, slow down and turn on your emergency flashers. Signal and move slowly to the shoulder or breakdown lane. Then get to a safe, flat surface well away from traffic if possible. If you have a spare tire and the correct tools, and you know how to change a tire, go ahead and put the spare on. Alternatively, raise your hood or tie something white to your radio antenna or door handle to alert other drivers and the police that you need help. If you're a member of a motor club like AAA that provides roadside assistance, give them a call. You can also call a local tire service or repair shop if you have the number. Don't call 911. Driving defensively is especially important when you're sharing the road with vehicles like school buses, mail trucks, or delivery vans. All these are likely to stop unexpectedly, and when they do, there's often pedestrian activity as well. To avoid trouble, add at least a couple seconds extra following distance when you're behind them. And stay alert for kids darting across the road or a delivery person jumping out of the driver's side door. Big rigs and tour buses present their own set of challenges. One problem with these vehicles is obvious, their size. A tractor trailer can weigh up to 80,000 pounds and at 50 miles per hour, it requires at least 300 feet to break to a standstill. Trucks and buses have bigger blind spots too. You want to stay out of these. Remember, if you can't see the side mirrors on a truck's cab, then you're invisible to its driver. If you've ever been passed by a big truck on the highway, you've probably felt what's called buffeting. This happens when the air the truck is pushing out of its way hits your car hard enough to push you off course. When you're passing or being passed by a truck, bus, or RV, keep both your hands on the steering wheel. 
As the air pressure pushes your car away from the larger vehicle, steer gently into the push. Be careful not to overcorrect. That will put you way closer to them than you want to be. When you want to pass one of these big vehicles, it's basically the same as passing a car, but there are some differences. You need more open road to pass a truck or bus since it takes longer to get around them. So pass quickly and minimize your time in their blind spots. Give them plenty of side clearance. Be ready for buffeting when you get near their front. And always wait until you can see both of their headlights in your rearview mirror before merging back into your lane. We've discussed a lot of ways that you can defend yourself on the road. Let's review. Create a safety cushion around your vehicle whenever you're in traffic. Don't be a distracted or aggressive driver yourself and stay away from them on the road. Turn on your headlights at dusk and in bad weather. Maintain a moderate speed so you don't overdrive them. Know what to do if you have a blowout or other emergency. Prepare your vehicle and yourself for safe driving in bad weather. Use your brakes carefully. Steer with the direction of skids. Allow trucks and buses plenty of space and watch out for buffeting. The road is a dangerous place, but you can lower the risks by driving defensively. Whether you're dealing with bad weather, bad drivers, or just plain bad luck, you can defend yourself and arrive at the end of your journey safely.